Hey everybody, no guest Nico here. I'm going to continue on with my solar project. Uh, I currently have 100 watt solar panel. I'm going to be increasing that and I would like to get up to four solar panels, maybe three, depends on what my uh, PMV controller can handle. Right now I think three is the max I can with 100 watt panels, but we're going to go from there. But what I wanted to do is show you guys what I'm going to upgrade to. Uh, right now I have a very crude setup. I actually use an old extension cord and ran the wires into the house from the solar panel to the PMV. Um, I don't have any circuit breakers. I don't have any fuses. Um, it's a very crude setup. It just runs right from the solar panel to the PMV to the battery. And then from the battery, obviously I have an inverter hooked up. And um, I'm also using uh, Moe's automatic transfer switch which allows me to run my lights in my kitchen and dining room um, when that transfer switch flips I get a little flash of light and then I'm running on solar power so right now I don't run very long on solar power because combined these lights probably pull about 76 to 80 watts a hundred watt panel it's probably averaging 50 to 60 watts during a day peak of around 93 I think is the most I've seen so anyway it's a crude setup but I want to grow it and how do I grow it? How do I make it safe? Because right now it's only 100 watts, so the setup I got works. It doesn't meet code. Um, it's not, doesn't have any safety features. So I'm going to upgrade. I'm going to make it safe. I'm going to show you guys how to do it. So first off, I purchased this grow, what is it? Power grow. It's a combiner box. Now what this does, this takes um, inputs your MC4 connectors from one, two, three, four solar panels. And then we can have outputs here going plus or minus to the house. We can bury a cable and then we have a ground. I can run a ground rod in an earth ground and connect it to here. And I want to open up this box, show you the inside. It's a well-made box. Um, it is, does have what I like on the inside. It does have a gasket all the way around, so it is fully IP65 rated. It will seal out moisture from the elements. And it also has, comes with two keys that you can lock it so nobody can get into. So I'm gonna move the camera. And we're gonna get into the insides of it. I'm gonna check the connections. I have seen some videos where some of these have some loose connectors. So we're gonna check all that and See how she does. All right, let's move the camera. All right, here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. And you can see here, you have your positive, and then behind that, you have your negative inputs. If I kind of tilt to the side, you can see the positive and negative. They each go to their own fuse block. Now, each one of these fuses you can open, it is just a regular fuse. I'll take a picture of this so you can see the details, but each fuse is a 15 amp fuse. So you could run one, maybe two solar panels off of each one of these fuses. I've seen seven and a half amps drawn for my 100 amp, uh, 100 watt panel. So this may be fused, it'll be pushing it. I'm probably only gonna run one panel off of each of these, either one panel, and run four in series, no, I'm sorry, four in parallel, or I'll run two in series and then parallel and run a 24 volt system. But for right now, I'm just I only have one panel, so I'm gonna be using the one. And as I grow, I'll be connecting more and it'll run in series. So from here, you can see we're gonna have, they go through the fuse, then they all connect to this bus bar. Now this bus bar will then connect to here we have a surge protection device. This will allow for any, if there was a lightning strike, it will not allow, like if lightning hits your solar panel or any of the wiring associated with it, this will blow and not allow that power to run all the way through into your house. This is a sacrificial unit. So if this blows, there's no resetting it. You have to replace this unit. So then from here, you can see we're also running into our breaker box. So, and then we have our negatives. 
are all tied into the same bus bar type of setup. And here I have a DC breaker box, breaker. So I will be able to turn this off, allow me to service anything inside the house that I may be touching live current. So it makes it safe, it makes it code. I can actually be compliant and safe at the same time. So every one of my panels will be fused. I'm protected from surges. So any high voltage surges will be, will trip this. And my breaker here, if I'm overdrawing amps, the breaker will break. And also if I want to service my system, I can turn it off here. So one thing this particular one is not, doesn't have that I've seen in other setups is there are no diodes which would allow, which would stop any back feeding of power into my solar panels. So if I was to get a back feed of power through this system, there is no diode to say, to prevent that from happening. So I'm gonna to wanna to put something in line with my fuse panels or with my solar panels to be able to prevent any power going back and damaging my solar panels. So that's something I'm gonna look into and research and find out which device I wanna get that is best for that. Um, I could have bought a combiner box that had diodes. They are a little higher priced, but I will go ahead and put the price of this in the link in my description and, the, and you guys can go ahead and check it out. And there are other brands out there, other more expensive units that has all the circuitry you want. But for my little system, this is gonna work out well. I'll be fused, protected from overcurrent and also breaker, also protection from overcurrent. And uh, it will allow me to disconnect the system, turn it off, service it, if I want to, let's say, change, put a new uh, switch from my PMV controller to an MPPT, I just turn the power off here. I know I completely killed all the incoming power, and then I can uh, go ahead and service what I had to service, go back out, turn my service back on. Okay, so now that I've covered all the components here, and I even like the fact that they grounded the outside door, and everything is connected to a chassis ground. Everything's connected to the chassis. Everything's watertight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and check all my connectors. Make sure they're nice and tight. Could not turn that one. That's really tight. That one gave like a very little turn. About a quarter turn there quarter turn there. So I would suggest if you get one of these, see, they're not all as tight as they can be to go through and tighten everything up. I've watched videos on YouTube where people just grab the wires and they fell right out. So that one actually was almost a half a turn on tightening that wire. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on and tighten every connector here. Some of these look like they're about a half a turn, almost a full turn on that one. So it's uh, again, not a bad idea to go through, and I can't remember if I did these. I think I did, but it doesn't hurt. Check this ground again. Now I'm gonna check the ground back here. That one was completely loose. I'm gonna have to get with the bigger bit. Barely touched it, so. That wasn't tight at all. So again, make sure you check all your connections. Make sure everything is nice and tight. These are crimped, so this end is fine. Um, one last thing, I, I don't like the way this is because I can only feed a wire through here. I'm gonna take this off and show you. Um, if you're gonna do an outside installation, I wanna run conduit. And the way this is set up, I'm gonna remove these completely. And this is set up to run cable through and then crimp it, make a watertight seal on the eight gauge, six gauge cable, whatever you use. But you can see it actually crimps down quite a bit. 
so you can get a nice watertight seal even if you use a small gauge wire. Um, I don't like this because then I have wire just dangling out of the box. I want to put this in conduit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure this. I'm going to find uh, PVC conduit to put here. Screw in a cap, glue in some conduit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a combiner box, like just a plastic box, uh, junction box. And I'm going to run those two conduit into one and then one larger one so I can feed into the house. That way everything is in conduit, everything is sealed, everything is code compliant. Uh, so I'm going to do the same thing here. Remove this one. I'm going to probably take these with me just to match up the size. Um, I could take a ruler and measure this. This looks like it's a either three quarters of an inch or half inch. Uh, regardless, I'm going to take it to the store. I'm going to get the conduit in a little bit of conduit and run it into another box and I'll do a part two video for that. So there you go. I've got my box. I'm going to go get some wire. Uh, I need to purchase some wire to go ahead and start doing the install. You can see here I have already removed this. I'm going to plug that with conduit instead and then run it so everything is nice and secure and uh, free from the elements. There's no moisture. I don't want any moisture getting to any of these cables. I know you can buy cable that is a direct berry cable. Um, I just don't want to deal with that hassle. I'm going to have this inspected for uh, code compliance and I don't want to run everything, get everything connected and then they tell me I need to redo it, put it in conduit. So I'm going to go ahead and run everything in conduit and I'm going to have it inspected and hopefully the inspector likes what he sees. If not, I'll have to redo it based on what he tells me. All right, so in your area, make sure you check your local codes and get your stuff inspected to make sure you're compliant. Uh, if you're not aware of your codes, if you have an electrician buddy, maybe you can ask them how to do it or just contact your local ordinance department in any township, city, whatever you're in and ask questions. See if you can get the codes and what you need to do to be compliant and then get it inspected, get it signed off by an inspector to make sure that Hey, you're good. So make sure you do you do, do your due diligence and get everything inspected and everything done properly. And if you don't know what to do, hire an electrician and have them do it for you. All right. Again, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for part two where I'm going to be installing this. I'm going to go get some cable, some conduit, figure out what I need to buy. And we're going to start uh, making this a little more cold compliant because right now I am not. So... Stay tuned and we'll see you soon. Thanks and God bless.